we know that the conventional models used in medicine treat, uh, in the textbooks, you know, in cardiology, <clears throat> they treat the cardiovascular system as a series of rigid pipes. Well, our blood vessels, if they are rigid, indeed rigid pipes, then we're not well. We might not have a clinically overt disease, a diagnosable condition, but we're not well, and we certainly have susceptibility to disease. We want to achieve wellness, which is a state of reduced or lack of susceptibility to disease, where there's, again, 100% of the potential blood flow. In a rigid pipe system as modeled in modern medicine, you know, where we're treating with, drug, with toxic drugs that, that are doing damage to the system on, on a chemical level or, or interventions uh, of surgery that are, by definition, surgery is controlled damage, which means it's damage, it includes damage. Uh, those, those all break our first rule of healing of first do no harm. So uh, again, we want to look at a, a bigger picture to understand how we have the potential to take a person who's maybe not sick, does not have disease, and make them more well. They might be at 50% health, 0% disease, but only 50% health. So we want to bring that up to 100%. And so, for example, we're talking about the heart, the electromagnetic field of the heart being the strongest field produced in the body, measurable feet, many feet away from the body. It turns out that that field uh, travels through the plasma, through the, the liquid plasma that has a similar function to the cosmic plasma that's an ionized gas, but this is an ionized liquid or ionized part, uh, components within that liquid, ionized uh, salts, for example, sodium chloride. And the transmission of that field is much faster than the, trans, than the mechanical transmission of the pressure pulse wave of blood. So the heart field gets to our blood vessels. If we think of the, the microvasculature, the, the, the little arterioles that regulate circulation into our, our tissues, uh, the, the heart... Uh, the EKG wave, in essence, the, the electromagnetic wave, gets to that tissue ahead of the, the physical bolus of blood that's coming with a pulse pressure wave, which is a, 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 a compression wave like sound. It's a longitudinal wave. But we have these transverse waves in the electromagnetic spectrum, which is the same spectrum as light, but now at, at longer wavelengths from the heart, like one hertz. That's a very long wavelength in terms of electromagnetics. <clears throat> but a very, very significant uh, biocommunication in that electromagnetic spectrum. So what happens is the heart uh, EKG wave comes and it polarizes polar molecules, including lactic acid. Lactic acid turns out to be a critical component of the response to the heart and how the, the, our blood vessels and our tissues can allow circulation in or not. So... Uh, the, the lactic acid is, is aligned by the, to the heart field, and that allows, temporarily allows, the smooth muscle of the vasculature to relax and respond to the pressure wave, the pulse wave, and allows the 50% of the blood flow to get through that requires that particular response, that relaxation to the heart pressure, uh, pulse wave, rather, <clears throat> electrical pulse. Uh, if we're in a, an electromagnetic field, like a 60 hertz or 50 hertz field from technical uh, man-made sources or higher frequencies from cell phones and all, uh, all the modern technologies, then that is a much higher frequency than one hertz. 60 hertz, we're, what we're doing with that field, and those fields are, are typically much stronger. They overpower our, our natural heart field that in a natural environment would be the strongest field. So now we're overpowering that heart signal to allow the, the blood into the organ uh, by maybe a factor of a thousand times and we're spinning those lactic acid molecules every 60 seconds and the heart wave comes through and it's overridden by the technical fields and, and so we can't uh, align the lactic acid and allow the, the blood vessel to open up and circulation to come through. So these kind of considerations are, are critically important if we're going to understand how the body really works in both natural and man-made environments with the modern stresses that we have on every level, on an energetic level, chemical level, how we overcome and heal with the mechanical stresses, psycho-emotional stresses, and how all these different levels of causality interact. <clears throat>
so, so we talked about plasma, the relationship between biological and cosmic plasma. I mentioned liquid crystal in the sense of liquid crystal water, which is what I call the fourth phase of water, easy water, as the, the researchers are calling it. Easy stands for exclusion zone, because when this liquid crystal water forms into sheets of hexagonal uh, lattice structure, exactly similar, the, each, each layer is exactly identical to the layers of crystal lattice ice in solid water, but they're offset. In ice, the, the layers are further apart. In water, in the liquid crystal water, they're closer together and they're, they're at an angle. So the holes, instead of lining up straight up and down as they do in ice, they line up at an, at an angle. So they're going to line up in several directions in that water, in that liquid crystal water. And these may actually uh, form uh, little light pipes, little, little uh, uh, tubes for, for light to tr be transmitted through. Uh, and we know from studies on insulin, for example, that when the cell's energy is up, when there's water in that form around the cell, that as soon as insulin contacts the, the layer of water on the outside of the cell that's living water, structured water, that the, each insulin molecule on average will stimulate and activate eight, on average, eight insulin receptors. So, so we've all been trained in the lock and key model of, of enzymes and substrates, or, or in this case, a hormone and, and its, its, uh, 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 its receptor site on the cell membrane. But now we have to add on to that. We have to add on to that model to understand that that's not all that's happening. In a low energy state, in a state of what I would call phase one, low energy terrain, where we're susceptible, even if we're not showing disease overtly, we are in a low energy state where we're susceptible to viral infection because a virus can attach to the cell membrane. If there's sheets of water there, the virus has no motility and it's not electromagnetically drawn to that membrane with the water there. It's the, it's, it's the distance from the membrane. And the water is an exclusion zone. So it will exclude not only viruses, but sodium chloride is not even included in that water. Uh, protons are excluded. So it's, it's a physical impossibility for that virus, which has no motility, no, no means of movement voluntarily. It's a little crystalline structure. It only moves according to the field that it's placed in. So only when that energy field is down on the cell are heavy metals and viruses attracted electromagnetically and drawn into the cell and onto the membrane. So, so uh, we're also susceptible in phase one terrain, low energy terrain to chronic degenerative disease, cancer. We, we all very likely, everyone, single person in modern times who's listening to this uh, talk has cancer cells in our bodies. And that's because we have uh, these areas in our body that are in that phase one terrain. These are usually areas that have been exposed to some kind of damage in the past. Typically cancers will form where there's been trauma, where there's been an injury. Now there's scar tissue in the healing process. Scar tissue we know restricts the flow of circulation. So now we have an area that's a backwater. It doesn't have the proper flow of energy and circulation, a re a removal of toxins. So toxins tend to build up there. It becomes a toxic waste dump. And over time, then that contributes to the, the causality of cancer and other degenerative conditions. OK, so, uh, so we're talking about uh, the liquid crystal state of, of water and how important that is as part of the cellular structure that's outside of the cell membrane, just as our energy field, the heart field, extends well beyond the skin. It extends into the field. When two people are in proximity, now we're in each other's heart field in a natural environment where we're not being overpowered by the, uh, the bars being up of the cell phone uh, prison planet times we're in. The, the bars are up, but if those bars aren't up, we actually can communicate, our hearts can communicate electromagnetically. We're in each other's field. Our, my heart field is now not just my heart field, it's a composite of the heart fields of myself and those around me. And we know from studies, uh, recent studies, where slides are presented, and some of those slides have intense uh, psycho-emotional content, you know, maybe a snake or a spider or someone who's injured or fire, uh, and some are just uh, a, a scenic uh, natural view that's, that's relaxing to look at, we know that, that the heart actually responds before the brain 
It responds actually before the slide is presented, when there's an intense slide that comes up. And, and from further studies, they found it's, the heart responds to that intense in information before the computer generates the random number that indicates what slide will be presented. In other words, it's an impossibility in the conventional model, the convention, in conventional theories of everything, or cl conventional clinical theories. But in the clinical theory of everything, we, we understand that time is not a linear, a linear uh, vector. It's not a one-way street. That, and, and it's proven by this and other studies that there is biocommunication that takes place in reverse time. So we have to change our fundamental physics thinking to understand that reverse time is, is uh, an actuality, it's a causality, The time is, is a loop, it's a vortex, like every other thing in existence. You know, every electron has a spin and protons and everything has, uh, the, the solar system, the galaxy, everything is a vortex in nature and so the same with time. Now we're riding in one direction on that in our consciousness, in our ego state, in our development, but who we truly are is our future self, who we are becoming. You're more of yourself now than you were when you were, uh, when you became a single cell in your mother's womb, and more than you were when you were born, and more than you were when you were two years old. So it's a becoming.